Let's talk quickly in this video about clicking on actors. We have the top-down example project here because it is the easiest project to set up to uh, enable things with clicking in because the entire thing is based on clicking for its movement and stuff already. So we're going to use this as a base. But I want to be able to click on certain actors and have stuff happen to them. So the easiest way to show that will be to just make an actor here. So we'll make a blueprint class for an actor and we'll call that BP clickable actor or something like that. And to that, I will just add a simple cube. I just so that we have something going on here. Then if we select the actor itself, so the topmost thing in this components hierarchy, and we scroll down in the details panel, we have these begin curse over and curse over on clicked and on released. So this is when your cursor goes over the object. This is where your cursor leaves being over the object. This is when you click down and this is when you release the left mouse button that is. So those are all events that we can just add. So very easily event actor begin cursor over, event actor and cursor over on clicked and released as well. These are the events that we can work with. So let's just put in some print strings here, move over. And then for the end cursor, we will say left actor. And then on clicked, we'll just say clicked. And then on released, we'll just say released. So now when I put this into the map, You'll notice that if I move over this, it says move over. When my cursor leaves this, it says left actor. When I click down the button, it says clicked. And then when I release the button again, only while it is over this actor, it will also say release. So if I click down and then I move my cursor and then I release, it doesn't say that because I'm no longer on that actor. If you're trying to replicate this and you're having some trouble, it is likely because your player controller does not allow for clicking interaction. So let's take a look at that. That's probably in top down blueprints. We have the player controller. If we look for click, we can see the click key events. First and foremost, we need to enable click events in a lot of different sample projects. Click events will not be enabled by default in the default player controller because you don't really need it in most games if it's not point and click and then we can add in a bunch of click events so we can add multiple events here so we can also add a right click and maybe even a middle click we can even if we wanted to add the scroll and technically you can add any button here so i can add the freaking t key which will now also be seen as a quote unquote mouse event so you can just add your controller buttons to this as well and it will just work as a mouse click it asks you for the default trace channel that is the channel that it's going to use for the collision traces so if you only want to be able to click on certain things on certain collision channels you can just change that here visibility is usually uh, what you're looking for though and with all that set up we should go back now that we have multiple key events you'll notice that unclicked and unreleased have this button pressed and this will let you know which of these buttons was actually used for your interaction. So if you want to only do a certain thing when you left click or when you right click or whatever, you can filter on that. Or you can do whatever other logic you want with these button pressed and button released inputs values. So here, let's say if we click on this, we want to uh, destroy actor uh, and then we can remove all this. And now when we go over here and we click on it it just destroys it you can do some quite interesting uh, stuff with this a very basic like cl clicking and dragging system that you could do is something like is held like is held by the player is going to be a bool that we make and then we can just like put that in event tick and if held is true what we're going to do is we're going to get the player controller and from that we get the result under the cursor by channel so it is going to do a line trace pretty much and tell us what location in the world will be under our mouse cursor and we're doing this by channel because we want to set this up to be either visibility or camera there's also the for objects version and that's going to just get you the object types so there we can make an array 
and this might actually be preferable now that i think about it a little bit more because now we can just say hey anything that is world static we're going to uh, be dealing with you and then we can come off this hit results here and just break that real quick and we can set this uh, to the location that we hit so we can just set actor location to our location that we hit and that's pretty much all there is to it so now when we click on the actor we set this value to being true and when we release from this actor we set the value back to being false and it's a little bit of a janky setup we're going to set the collision preset here to make sure that this object type is not world static otherwise it's going to try to put itself in the position where it already is because we're filtering on world static and this is by no means the most sophisticated method of doing something like this but this can be a pretty neat and easy way to like move objects around with clicking and dragging your mouse like this which is quite nice and you can see now it's over there and i can pick this back up and we can like put it over here now simple and easy as that and a very big thank you to all of my patreons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page a huge thank you to my cave student tier supporters earl monsville erno and my cave digger tier supporters sergey thomas